In this episode of Boat Tech TV, we're going to look at propeller anodes. One of the most important parts of looking after a marine propeller is to keep up with the anodes. Now this is a really important part because not only is water corrosive, but your propeller is in a situation where it's behaving as part of a battery. Between the engine, the hull, the electrical system and the water, this all creates a, a tremendous um, galvanic potential for the propeller. Uh, you can see from the two images here, the zincs are at the end of a, a service. The one on the left is off a sail drive. You've got a, a collar zinc going around the sail drive hub. There's a zinc behind it on a sail drive leg. You can just see the top and bottom screws there. To the right, it's more of a standard bullet zinc that would go in the center hub or a nut zinc, as people call them, uh, just to protect the propeller. And it's important to understand that it is a sacrificial part. Its purpose is purely to protect the phosphor aluminium bronze or your aluminium propeller from the marine environment and also the battery potential that is set up by the engine. In the marine environment, there's three types of corrosion, um, predominantly, and they're, they're usually happening all together. Um, you've got single metal corrosion, which is if you just put um, a piece of metal in the ocean uh, that's not connected to anything, um, it's going to itself is going to create um, an anode and a cathode and it's going to corrode itself. Um, just has to have an electrolyte present and some oxygen, obviously. Um, then you've got galvanic corrosion, um, and this is normally between um, bronze and a, a more a reactive metal, such as zinc, or steel hull and the zinc. So you've got uh, one re metal is more reactive than the other, and it just helps uh, protect the, the metal. The idea is that if the zinc wasn't there, the, um, the next reactive metal would be the zinc that's in the bronze. So you would start to see the bronze would be pitted and it would start to de-zincify. And the, the bronze goes like a pink color as it pulls all the zinc out. So by putting in an anode onto the uh, bronze, this goes first, this stays intact and everything's good. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, the other one is electrolytic corrosion, um, which would be stray currents. Somebody pulls in front of you, they look, drop an extension cord in the in the water, they forget about it, you've got an um, electrical uh, uh, current going through and then it accelerates and you get lots of pitting and stuff like that. Now bear in mind if you're in a marina, all these three can be happening together. Um, you've got single metal corrosion as soon as something goes in the water, you've got your galvanic from your dissimilar metals, from your uh, non-reactive bronze to your very reactive zinc, and then you've got your, your next door neighbors boat that's not earthed or grounded or the shore side powers wired up backwards, you, it's not polarized. And so all these little three things are gonna to come together and then destroy your little propeller. So we need to, we need to fix that. It's also worth remembering that the, um, the medium in which they act changes. So you can have fresh water, you can have brackish, half fresh, half, salt, half salty, and then pure salt water. Now each of the anodes that you can get can be tailored to that. There's not just, we all call them zincs, but they're not, they're not just zincs. Um, so the zinc alloys, um, which is, they, most of these here are actually zinc, um, they're designed for salt water. Um, they do have a, a little bit of cadmium inside them. So the environmental um, policies now are starting to change and you're probably gonna see in 10, 20 years time, the zincs won't be in use. Um, they'll use the aluminium. So the second type, and. This one is actually aluminium. You can't really tell, looks the same, feels the same. Well, it's an awful lot lighter. That's the only way you can tell. So they, you can use aluminium in uh, brackish water and also um, salt water, a little bit more reactive. Just a word of caution, if you do go over to aluminium zincs, uh, you have to change, aluminium zincs, there I said it, aluminium anodes. You have to change all the other anodes on the boat. So you can't just have the aluminium and the zinc um, anode because the, um, the zincs will go much, much, much faster and it's not balanced. Again, different um, on the uh, potential, different valency of the, the metals will cause you problems. So if you do switch over to aluminium, uh, you must make sure that all the other ones are the, are the same. The final one, which uh, I don't actually have here, is magnesium. Uh, magnesium is, uh, again, a little bit more reactive um, and this is for fresh water. So you wouldn't use this in salt water because it would disappear very, 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 very quickly. So each one of these... Um, Anodes has been tailored and suited for different types of water. The black one here, 
<laughs> just just so just as a you probably can't see it against my shirt um maybe it's for the camera this is an unusual one this is a unique to a, um, a tepa sailboat um, by amel and this is uh just a dummy cap that goes onto a, a propeller um because the their system it has a, an insulated system so it doesn't actually need one most of the ML owners still put them on uh, because it is in direct contact and it does give you extra protection so um, it's that's what that one's for next the insulation um, to install the zincs you're going to be looking at something around about 50% wear um, these ones here this one here you can see that's virtually uh, this would still be still be in, in good shape you can see that's that's virtually untouched. Um, this one's getting on, um, starting to go there. You, uh, one of the problems with the autoprop is we have these little um, small spots for the bolts to go through. So we use, um, it's actually off this one, um, little nylon bolts. Um, so we have the bronze, we have the zinc, and then we have the uh, plastic. And this, although it insulates it, if you put a stainless steel, you have a... a again another dissimilar metal and these here uh, rust much faster uh, you get a lot of chaps on these on these sailboats they will pay with the collar zinc they'll put um, nail varnish on the on between where the where the bolts are to stop that wearing so you, you're putting that part to sleep a little bit you see that camera yep um, just to protect where the bolt is because you've and you've got a dissimilar metal a dissimilar metal a dissimilar metal and it just creates a different potential and it accelerates the um, the corrosion of the anode so 50% for the anodes is, is a good number to, to do. Uh, you get some people will wear them, um, but most people it's just eyeballing them. Is it, is it sufficient enough? You can see this one here, this is off a, a Verifold. Uh, that's probably a little bit too far. That's that one. So you need it. At the end of the day, this is a very cheap part. This is a very expensive part. You're just trying to offset the balance. Um, oh, and the final thing, um, as I mentioned about putting the nail varnish on a tiny part just to stop it in a small part around the screws. Um, some people will not understand how the zinc works and will stick it on the hull or the propeller and then they'll paint the propeller. Uh, it's really, really important not to do that because it needs for the uh, ions to break down in the zinc or the aluminium or the magnesium has to be in contact with the electrolyte, otherwise it doesn't work. And then the next thing that will go is your propeller. So must must not paint them. So I've given you a brief overview there of uh, how the zinc process works, the uh, anode process that is. Just wanna now give you a rundown of some of the zincs that we have for some of the propellers and just show you the options and how things are done. Um, for the smaller sailboat propellers, uh, this is just a two blade varifold up to about 16 inches. They don't actually have any zinc um, spots on them. So there's no space to put the anodes on. Um, for this, you would have to have a shaft zinc. And normally you have a space on the shaft, either if there's a bracket or a cutlass bearing here, you have space to put this on. Um, if the support, the shaft overhang um, is, is too short, you can put it on the other side, but it must have uh, one, some people, times people put two on, it just depends, it depends on your boat, it depends on how well it's grounded, where it is, if it's next to a steel pier or next to a wooden pier, you'll get to figure out how much, um, how fast these wear every year as you haul out. So for the smaller propellers, this would be West Marine, I think like 20 bucks, this is a one inch um, collar zinc. Um, for, the, for the next size up, You'll be looking at a sail drive. Um, you can see this one here. Um, it's on the camera there. This is actually we've machined a slot in this, and there's two two horseshoes that will bolt into the side here. And again, they just uh, you just take the old ones out. It comes with a set of fasteners. It's actually a three one six stainless. Um, these don't tend to because you have such a nice connection. Um, between the zinc and the propeller. You don't tend to get them wasting away just by the uh, screws there. So that's for the sail drive. Up to That's a two blade sail drive. Once you get up to a three blade propeller, um, this is off this one here. You can see for the varifold, uh, it has this little um, stand that goes over, obviously I haven't got the blades on here, um, and this would sit on, this is bolted on, and this is what we call a bullet zinc. Uh, just for the camera there, you can see that. Um, and this just screws onto the um, onto the, the screw there, uh, just with the pipe wrench, just nip it tight. And that's very straightforward to install. 
for the larger propellers, um, things get a little bit more exciting. So you have to um, start bolting them on and keeping them together. Um, this is off a, a very large 26 inch um, propeller. And this would again, there'd be a plate on here, but it would have a thread, threaded hole in here. You just screw the zinc on, so there's a, it's a kind of a belt and braces. Screw it on, and then this one goes through, probably a bit of Loctite if you're, if you're up on the hard. Tighten it up, lock it up, and that should be good for a, a year, year or two, depending on where you are. For autoprop, um, the zincs are virtually identical apart from different size. A uh, H5 and a H6. Uh, they fit on with their little plastic screws like this. Um, they just go as you would normal screw. They're just lightweight. They don't need a lot of force. The, the, the shear force that they take is not that great. Um, again, the purpose of putting these on was to stop um, these little tabs from wasting away. So you can put a little bit of nail, var nail varnish on here um, to stop it wasting. Um, but with the plastic screws, it shouldn't normally be a problem for the lifetime of the zinc. It's not, not usually an issue. Um, now the final thing I just need to reiterate is, as you can see from this one here, the, the zinc's all white and powdery. Um, this obviously is the zinc oxide, or it would be aluminium oxide, um, and it does make uh, like a white protective coating, which is a very, very good insulator. Um, when you do put the zincs on, you t obviously take the screws off. When they go on, make sure you sand. They should be nice and shiny, just like this, with a good sanded keyed surface. Uh, just make sure you remove this from the bronze so you get and you can see a nice you get down to metal so then you've got a good metal to metal contact nip the screws up and then you shouldn't have any issues if you don't have this off um, I've seen in, in stores where the it hasn't been done right the propeller has been key bound so it's not sitting on the shaft correctly there'll be a little gap here the zinc will be absolutely useless because it hasn't got any connection so all the effort you've gone to to buy the propeller and to protect the propeller for nothing and after the end of the season all the blades are going to be pitted you're going to have um, anything that's um, a very reactive metal on it is going to be uh, all the zinc's going to be pulled out and your propeller is going to be in pretty bad shape so that's just a brief rundown of the zincs the process involved and uh, how you fit them if you like this video please do follow us on facebook and on youtube um, i'm actually the us agent for branton's propellers uh, we're in virginia beach and we service uh, Verifold, Autoprop, and Sigma Drive. Um, our contact details on the screen here. We've got a great website, kingproportion.com. Finally, um, coming up very quickly, uh, we're going to be at the Annapolis Broad Show, um, April 20th to the 22nd. I'm going to have all these propellers on the stand. We're going to be selling Sigma Drive on the stand. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're at booth C12, I believe. Um, so if you're around, it's a couple of weeks away. Um, please do come down and see us. It's always a, a good turnout at the Springboard Show and it's uh, very enjoyable to see everyone. But that's it. Thank you very much and we'll see you next week.